We now return to Toronto for a conversation with the Prime Minister. Sunny ways, my friends. Sunny ways. Lofty ideals, but these days dogged by controversy. We need to make sure that uh, the office of the Prime Minister is without reproach. The process we have in our country isn't that I report to journalists on my personal situation. It's that I report to the Ethics Commission. I should have recused myself. And I'm sincerely sorry for not having done so. The buck stops with the Prime Minister. Prime Minister, you've been in power now for, for seven years. Uh, you have violated uh, ethics rules, so have members of your cabinet and most recently your international trade minister. Why do these ethical breaches keep happening and why haven't you been able to stop them? Well, I think, first of all, um, you know, our government is focused on uh, getting things done for Canadians, on delivering uh, the kinds of results that Canadians elected us to do. Ambitious but you can do that without breaching change. ethics. When, when you do lots of things, uh, every now and then people are going to make mistakes. And that is why it's a good thing that we have a system uh, that catches those mistakes, that calls them out, that you know, shares them with Canadians, uh, that, that we explain and and Canadians get to decide whether it was an honest mistake or whether someone was trying to fill their pockets. I mean, we have a system that has the kind of accountability, transparency that works and that is clear to reassure Canadians that if someone is taking advantage of the system, either deliberately or by accident, they'll get caught and called out on it. And that's, that's an example of the institutions working. Now, from my perspective, it sucks um, because you, know, you don't want people to be making mistakes. You want people to be able to focus on delivering good things for Canadians. But it's happened but with it you. It's happen. happened with Mr. Morneau. It's happened with Ms. Ng. You've been in power for seven years. Mm -hmm. What's missing? Why does it keep happening? I think I think people are always uh, going to be trying to do the right things, but every now and then there will be mistakes. Uh, and you know, what what we will continue to do is you know improve our systems, uh, you know make sure people are being careful and learning from those mistakes. Being a prime minister is a tough job. Nobody would dispute that. There has been a lot of hate thrown your way this year. There there have been people wearing T-shirts with nooses. Uh, absolutely horrid stuff and I'm just wondering how you've dealt with that this year and how your family has dealt with that this year you know what what worries me about that is not that it's aimed at, at me in particular I don't take it personally what I see is there's an awful lot of people who are hurting out there a lot of people who are frustrated who are angry who are lashing out at whatever convenient target there is. I'm certainly uh, someone that people can blame for a lot of things uh, if they want, and, and that's what they do. What interests me more about this whole thing is what can we do to reassure those folks that their institutions are there for them, that when we're talking about fighting climate change, for example, we're talking about getting better jobs for them into the future. And, you know, I was just in Hamilton and uh, making an announcement around the greening of a DeFasco's mill, moving away from coal-fired uh, steel making to uh, greener electric arc steel making. Um, and it was great news for the company, but it was really great news for the workers there. And these were you know, big guys and, 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 and you know, tough women who were focused on you know, work at really tough job. And they were saying, like, this, this green transformation means that, you know, this woman said she was a third generation DeFasco steel worker in Hamilton. There was now going to be a seventh and eighth generation because we're investing. We actually have a plan to make sure that not just Canada benefits from the way the world is changing, but Canadians benefit with good jobs, with opportunities, whether it's the electric supply chain uh, for zero emission vehicles, uh, the battery supply chain, whether it's uh, this transforming our mining industry towards more electric critical minerals. These are the kinds of things that are designed to reassure people that there is place for them in the future, that the future is uncertain, sure, but 
how we're working together, leaning on each other and solving these problems brings us together. So yes, some people are mad and lashing out. For me, every time I hear someone say that, I, my, my reflection is, okay, how can I reassure you that Canadians will continue to be there for you, that we're going to build a better future? I'm not going to tell you, yeah, Canada's broken because, it's, because you're facing a tough time. I'm going to tell you, you know what, we can improve this together. We can fix it together. Your government's going to be there. Your fellow Canadians are going to be there. There's reasons to be positive and optimistic about the country and about the future because that's who Canadians are. Prime Minister, happy holidays to you and to your family. Uh, and I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you, Armour. And we leave you with the winter solstice celebrations here in Kensington Market. Happy holidays.